My name is Aaron Patrick, I'm a Chartered Accountant, Certified UK Trainer and also that QuickBooks chap on the internet. Now 2020 has been a really good year for enhancements to QuickBooks and we've seen some really useful features that have been added throughout the year. But one of the ones that I find the most useful and the one that's actually been given me as a practice manager of an accountancy firm the most confidence is the introduction of month end review. Now, month end review in itself is a really great way in which you can make sure that certain tasks and also certain parts of your client software is all correct. And it's designed for you as the accountancy firm to be able to go in and be able to make sure that you're happy that everything's been put in the right place. Let's have a deep dive now into what month end review is and how it can make sure for you that you've got everything you need to have confidence in the information that's been put into QuickBooks. You'll find that there's so many good little features in there that what we want to do is want to go step by step through them and make sure we're confident and comfortable with what's going on. So let's have a look now. Okay, so I'm on my dashboard at this point in time. And then from my dashboard to get to that month end review, you'll notice in the top left hand corner at the top here, we have a new area called month end review. Now month end review itself is designed to be an area where you can actually use it as a place where you can assign staff or yourself to go through and look at elements of this, which is useful. Month end review is only available for QuickBooks online accountants, so the QBOA accountants. So if you're signing in and you're seeing clients coming through, then this is what the element is. Remember to get access to that, you need a client to have invited you as an accountant. Once you've been invited as an accountant, you get loads of other tools and equipment that's gonna help you look after your client and month end review is just one of them. When you first get into month end review, you're gonna have the opportunity to choose which month you're gonna be reviewing in the top left hand corner. So you can choose this year or last year and select which month it is you're looking to look at. Below that are three different selections, transaction review, account reconciliation, and final review. Now the bit that we've got to concentrate on first is transaction review. And as soon as you get into this area, you're basically being told what errors or issues that the QuickBooks has found so far. So first of all, it's going to tell you to look and make sure that your bank transactions are all up to date. It gives you a nice little link to take you directly there to make sure that's all been done correctly. Your next option is to look at the open issues. So it's going to tell you if there's any transaction that it's found that is uncategorized. So if it's found a transaction which you or the client or one of your team members have has allocated to uncategorized, it will bring this transaction up for you. And from here, you can even dive stra straight into that transaction and make any adjustments you need to make. You also get to see transactions without payees as well. Now, payees is actually a really useful area and it's something that from my point of view, when I talk about training my clients and training my staff, I insist that payees pay are actually put there. It's an optional field, which I feel is actually, is really, really essential when you're putting together client records. So the fact that you're getting a list of ones that haven't been assigned gives you the opportunity to maybe go back to a certain member of staff or going back to your client and say, can you please start looking at bringing these into play? Because the ones without payee are gonna be the ones difficult for you to make sure that they're being put to the right chart of account. So it's good that this element here is bringing them in. So in the top right hand corner, you have the option to go in and set what status it's going to be at. So if you won't need to, you can say waiting, say that you're waiting for the information to be completed or done to say that that section has been done. And that to do section means that later on we'll show you how you can look from all your clients to see at what stage the review process is at. So that's gonna give you confidence that the review has been done and then you can see which clients haven't been done yet, therefore might need attention. Now what gets really exciting about this is this option to do additional items at the, bottom, at the bottom. Now the additional items section already has on every client some set 
items that are there pre-baked into QuickBooks, so pre-baked into the month end review. But you'll notice there's an add button down here. Now let's go through the ones that come automatically. So first of all, check for personal transactions. And what is great is there's an ability to put a link there. So you're asking the user of this particular review, you're asking the user of this particular review to check for personal transaction and you give them a link. So they click on the link, and they can complete that task. You can also ask them to review loan payments, record cash payments, and profit and loss. And then each part of these stages, they also have the option here to choose if it's going to be to do, waiting and done. So the same questions that you have. Now we're gonna come back to adding transactions in a moment, but let's just go through what comes naturally within the month end review. Under your account reconciliation area, it gives you a really great view that's gonna tell you at what stage your bank accounts are reconciled to. And this is really powerful because it's forcing people to look at not just their main bank account, but look at the other bank accounts there as well. So this could be a really useful feature for you to make sure that all of the bank accounts are being considered and that all of the accounts are being looked at properly so that we can make sure that we've got confidence in the figures that we're bringing into QuickBooks. And also, just like you did on the transaction review, you also have additional items which include things like reconcile loan account. Finally, the final review section gives you the opportunity to ask your team to go through and check the balance sheet and the profit and loss with the same status as they had before. So they're stating if these are correct or not correct. And that's where you get to standard with month end review. So really simple steps to make sure that you're happy that the information that's in there has been looked at and it's been made sure that someone's been able to put a big tick against it to say they're happy with what's in QuickBooks at this point in time. And when you think about it, that's really powerful because we're starting to look now at what's next. So we're starting to really rely on things like the cash flow forecast in QuickBooks. We're looking at data management, items like that. And the only way we can be confident in the things that's there is to make sure that the data that's already in QuickBooks has been reviewed and is at a good state. If we know the data that's in QuickBooks now is correct, then when we start looking at predictions and we start looking at cash flow forecasts and budgets and everything else that goes with it, then we know we're at a good basis to be able to make those predictions work true for us. But as I said, it doesn't stop there. You now have the ability to add even more elements to it. And that's what we're gonna look at now. We're gonna look at how you can really push this add feature to be able to make it so you can add even more steps. And it may be steps that you want for every single client you've got in your portfolio, or it gives you the ability to, for particular clients to look at particular areas. As an example, back on that transaction review, yes, we're keeping an eye on profit and loss and record cash transactions, review loan trans payments, everything else. But you might be in a client that's actually got a PayPal account or something that's really complicated. If that's the case, and you've got a control account that goes with it, well, it's really easy to add that. So all I need to do is I'm gonna jump in, find a report that I want my staff members to be looking at. So in this client, I'm really interested that they keep an eye on, much like my PayPal control account. So what I wanna do is I want to make sure my staff members are looking at this correctly. And for me to push them to this report, I just take a copy of the URL at the top, I jump back into month end report. Now I've got my link. All I do is I go to the add button at the bottom. From there, I give it a name. So PayPal control will do. My link can be PayPal control. And my details can be make sure PayPal control is nil. QuickBooks page link. And all I'm going to do now is paste, paste that transaction. Once I've got all that information in, I press save, and that creates me a brand new additional item element down the bottom here. And all I need to do is click on PayPal control, and it will take me to that section that I need to go. So you can make as many tasks as you need to, so the user of this month end review can quickly go to a different section. And what that means is that you can basically point them in the right direction of what it is they're reviewing which gives lots of power in terms of being able to make sure you're pushing that user to the right place. Where it gets even more exciting, in my opinion though, is that you can start utilizing it with other elements as well. For example, 
Imagine that you had a journal entry that you do on a regular basis. Imagine you had a wages that you have to do every single month. And you want to make sure this journal has been done on a regular basis. Well, once you've saved it, you can enable it as a recurring payment. Once you set it as recurring, maybe you want to put it as unscheduled and you just want to call it wages journal. Save template. And because this wage journal changes each month, I don't want it to automatically just post. I want someone to be prompted to go and put this in. So what I do is I bring back that wages journal. I click into it, if I was gonna use it, and I copy that URL. Now I've copied that URL, I can now go back to say my transaction review, and I can add wage journal, link name, journal, details, post, wage, journal, and then I can put in my link. And what that does is it means that one of these tasks now is to complete your wages journal, click on the link, and it takes you directly to that template. Meaning that you then have the template in hand for you to create that journal entry and move on. And then you can mark it as done to say that that task has been completed. Other bits that we found really useful about this is by bringing this in line with one of the other new features of 2020, Tags. Now currently Tags is sat within the QuickBooks Lab section of QuickBooks. So it's a feature you need to opt into before you can actually utilize it. But the idea of Tags is it's about discoverability. And what you can do is on any transaction within QuickBooks or for your client, any transaction in QuickBooks, you can give them the power to be able to put a tag against that transaction for you then to discover it or for them to discover it at a later date. That comes really powerful is if your client may be a bit struggling on have they done this correct. As an example, on any transaction, if your client was putting the transaction into QuickBooks, but then was a little bit confused about if this was right in terms of the category or the VAT, for example, they can choose a tag that says for review category. That means then that as they're picking a tag, they can happily put the item into QuickBooks, but it's flagging it as something that you would, or they would like to be seen at a later date. So in that month end review, using the same idea as I've just said about making sure you've got the link, within the tagging section, we have a link now for the for review section, so we can just grab the link that relates to this. That means that from a month end review, under account reconciliation, I can create one called tag review, which gives me a link directly to the tag section and which tag section I want to look at. What you're doing is you're creating to-do lists, pushing the user directly to where it is you need them to be looking into. And in this case, I want my staff to be reviewing any tags that have been put for full review on a month by month basis, because then they can deal with them there and then. And from this view here, this gives the user the ability to click into any of the transactions and they can put it through there. And then from final review, you can even start putting in custom reports as well. So under the report section, if there's a report that you want your customer or you want to be looked at on a regular basis. So for example, you may have a need that the accounts receivable report on today's date, so save customization. As long as you've saved the report in customization, then when you jump into custom reports, go into the report itself as a custom report, and then this, uh, this URL up here can be copied. So in summary, when it comes to month end review, when you just open it up for the first time, you've got loads of bits that it's telling you that everything's going to the right place. When it comes to that month end review, when you open it for the first time, there's loads of bits that's trying to teach you and trying to push you or your staff members to make sure the right things have been reviewed. But as you can see, there's loads of customization options. All you need is the link, the URL, to wherever it is you want them to look at. So it could be the tagging section, it could be a journal entry, it could be a particular custom report. Whatever that item is going to be, you can then push them to that area so that, that then they can go and make sure that they're happy with reviewing that transaction or that area or that element within the books. Then they get to choose between to do, waiting for information or done. And that's them saying that they, that transaction's either complete or it still needs work to be done. Also, if we look at the QB accountant area, 
As soon as we log into our client area and we can see all our clients, we now have the ability to jump between overview and bookkeeping. Overview is the one we're used to, the one we've seen before. Bookkeeping is a breakdown of how our month end review is doing directly on the first screen. So without having to go into each individual client, I can see at what stage they're at. So in this case, I haven't started any of my September reviews. QB case studies has already started and I can even click on the link. And from here, I can see further details of how they're doing. So I can see if the wages journal has been posted, the PayPal control has been posted, and I can even view details even further. And it will take me directly to the client where I can make adjustments. So let's say that I'm happy now my final review has been done. So let's do to do it done on both of these. That means that when I go back to my QB accountant, you'll notice I now have a green tick in that area signifying that I've done that particular task. And again, if I need to, I click into it and I can see the details there. And it's not just the details that QuickBooks have put in there as automatic for us. It's even the ones that we've added as we go along. So there's my tag review we added. There's my wages journal and there's my PayPal control. So it's really powerful. It's giving you the ability to be able to have a global look of everything that's going on and then lets you make sure that you can see everything as it is. Here at Boffix, we're really enjoying the month end review. And also we've seen a lot of people who subscribe to the channel have been able to see that there's been real use cases for it. So hopefully you can find some use out of it. Hopefully you can see how beneficial it's going to be and somehow work it into your general workflow so you can get the most out of QuickBooks Online. My name is Aaron Patrick. It's been a pleasure to do this video for you and I'm sure I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Cause I can get him out of my head I don't care what we do, everything's really new Even if we're staying bad My heart is saying yeah, 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 yeah You know I want him nah, 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 nah My heart is saying yeah, 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 yeah Yeah, yeah, yeah Hello and thank you for watching that video. What you may not know is this channel that you've watched this video from is part of a wider group. That wider group is called Apple Core Production. And the three channels that we have involved are as follows. Aaron Patrick, the QuickBooks Chat, Boffix Tax Tip. Finally, we have Apple Core Live and Geeky. All the links and everything are down below in the description, but it really mean a lot to us if you can go and give a like to the other channels as well.